Good afternoon. My name is Mark Golden, and today I'm going to present Pure Bending. This is the idea of a of a member. It can be any type of beam. It can be a square beam. It can be an I beam, or any type of beam that is in pure bending. And and so every so when when this beam when this beam is bent, it's going to it's going to form an arc. And that that arc under it's going to have a constant load. The arc is going to stay the same. And there's just a couple of rules that I wanted to go through first before we start um, before we start getting into any of the math of it. I just wanted to define all the terms and uh, show the different drawings that you'd be making when you wanted to solve these problems to that you'd be able to keep track of everything. And so basically, right up here we have our member in pure bending. And so here's our member. It has a length L, and the length of the member along the neutral axis does not change. So no matter how how much this bends or stays the same or bends down this way, the neutral the length of the neutral axis is going to remain the same as the length of the member. And when it, when the member does bend, it's going to form an arc. It's going to form part of the part of an overall circle. And the radius of that circle, which is called the radius of curvature, is going to be from the center of that circle to the to the neutral axis at this point A, and from the center of the circle to this neutral axis at point B. And then the angle that sweeps out that arc is going to be this angle theta. And so, just right here, I just just to reiterate. The, the length of the L is the length of the member. It is also the length of the neutral axis. It is also the length of the member at the neutral axis, even after it bends. Because you'll notice when this when this member bends, this is going to be from here to here is going to be a little bit shorter than from here to here, and the longest portion is going to be from here to here. So the bottom of the of the member is defect, is 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 deforming and it's gaining length. The top of the member is deforming and it's being compressed. And so our radius of curvature is going to be constant. Our the angle that that is sweeping out the arc formed by the member is going to be constant and the length of the member is going to remain constant. The only thing that's going to change any of this is if you change the load, which means you're going to be changing the arc of it. So the other the other drawing that you're going to have to do is going to be a cross section cross section of the member that you have. It could be a, what I said earlier. It could be a, a cross section of an I beam. It could be a cross section of a rod. It could be a cross section of a square piece of lumber or a cross section of reinforced concrete. Whatever it is, um, you just draw the shape of that cross section. Just for simplification, I'm going to use a square square beam or a rectangular beam and um, from this from this cross section you're gonna you're gonna determine the centroid just use the methods to determine centroid whatever whatever shape of beam you have to use y bar or whatever you need and uh, also you know you, you need to find the centroids so that you can find the neutral axis you need to find the neutral axis which runs through the centroid you need that to find the distance y. The distance y is the distance from the centroid, and you need that because wherever you're talking about, if you're, if you're talking about on the very outside portion down here, and you're looking for the stress inside this portion, it's going to be a lot more than this than the stress here. And the same goes for up top. So these these portions that I've marked in red, your stress is going to be highest there. And it's going to be lowest where uh, along the neutral axis, and you know that because since the neutral axis doesn't deform, there can't be any 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 force acting on it. Because if there if there were, then it would either expand or shrink the slightest amount. And so it's going to be it's going to be anywhere from the centroid that's going to be it's 
expanding or shrinking. And in for our particular drawing that we saw, the top the top portion is going to be being compressed and the bottom portion is going to be being expanded. So depending on what portion of the beam you're looking at, if you want to find the stress here, you designate this as your Y value from the centroid to wherever that is. And so we, our Y max is going to be the maximum distance from the neutral axis and the Y minimum is going to be the um, the furthest distance below the neutral axis. And so that's how you find your distance Y. And you, you also find the area from your cross section uh, for this rectangle is simple and be more complex depending on what type of beam you have. But generally it's going to be something like a rectangle or an I-beam. And the area is usually given for the I-beam. But you still, want to, you still want to draw it out just so that it helps you get a visualization of what's happening, especially for determining your Y. And also for determining inertia, which you'll see is going to be, um, it's going to be important for solving any of the problems that we're looking at. Uh, inertia in this sense is going to be fairly abstract and it just develops out of the math that we do and it's just used as a tool to solve this problem.